Oh boy, do I have a fun beginner sewing project for you today. I'm Jan Howell and welcome back to my sewing room. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make these fabric gift bags. They are so fun and quick to make up and you can use them for so many things. If you're new to sewing, this is a great beginner sewing project. These bags can be made any size. I have some suggestions for you and I will be showing you how to make the medium size bag today. They make really cute gift bags. You can store almost anything in them. I'm going to make up a bunch of muslin size medium bags for my onions, my garlic and stuff to put in my pantry. And even the little bags can be fun for candy treats or small items that you want to keep together. Look how nice they cinch up and stay closed. Be sure to watch the whole video because as always, I'm going to be showing you several tips and tricks that will come in handy for other sewing projects. Let's not waste any more time and get right into the project. Let's go over the few items and things that you'll need. Of course, you'll need your sewing machine, some fabric. Like I say, you can make these any size. The size that I'm going to show you how to make in this tutorial is nine by 11. And I have pre-cut my fabric. You can use cotton, you can use canvas, you could even use a sheer fabric. I like cutting my fabric, especially squares, out with a rotary cutter and ruler and mat, but you can always use regular scissors if you want to. You'll need some kind of measuring device. I like to use my seam gauge, and I really in, have enjoyed this hot hammer. It comes in handy, it has measurements on it as well for these little projects. I love it. You'll need some pins and some fabric clips if you like to use those wonder clips, a safety pin, some kind of marking device. I like to use this disappearing pen. You can mark and then it will come off when you iron or press the fabric. You'll need some kind of drawstring. There's so many options here. You can use just regular ribbon, jute, twine. You can even use baker's twine like I have in these smaller bags. And as most of you know, I like to upcycle things. This is upcycled t-shirt yarn that I have made and it's a little bit stretchy. It works well for projects like this. Some kind of turning stick, a seam ripper. Not that you're going to make a mistake, but there is a little section in this tutorial where you will be using a seam ripper. If you want to embellish the bag, you can use Wonder Under and iron on some kind of shape or name or something like that. And if you wanted to add a little tag or label, you can do that in your seam. And I have a tutorial showing you how to make these labels easy, fun project to do. You'll need an iron and an ironing board, or I like using my little wool felt ironing pad, and you'll need a pair of scissors. I have pre-cut my quilter's cotton fabric to nine by 11, and the first thing that we're going to do is pre-press the top edge, and you'll thank me later because this makes the project so much quicker and easier. I've really grown to like this hot hammer and I'll put the link in the description below, but it really does make this process a lot quicker and easier. So I'm gonna fold that top edge under a quarter of an inch and press all the way across. Then I'm gonna fold it down another inch Do that on both pieces. Unfold and place the right sides together. The top edges matching. I'm gonna line up those creases and either clip or pin it in place. and you'll start at that top edge and sew all the way down across the bottom and up the other side, back stitching at the beginning and end of the seam. I'm using a straight stitch, a 3 8 inch seam allowance. The length of the stitch is two and a half. When I get about to the end, I'll leave my needle down, lift up my presser foot, pivot the fabric and continue sewing across. I'm going to take my pen, you can even use a pencil if you want, 
or you, you could even mark it just with a pin, but I like to use this erasable pin. I'm gonna measure down two and a half inches and just mark that on both sides. Now to finish off the seam so it doesn't fray, I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch along the edge there. You could also just simply cut the edges with pinking shears, but I'm going to show you how to use that zigzag stitch in case you don't have a pair of these pinking shears, which helps keep the fabric from fraying. So I'm gonna start at that two and a half inch point and sew down along the edge using a zigzag stitch, the width at four and the length at two. Make sure you're stopping at that line. Open up the bag so that you can finger press that top opening that we didn't finish the seam off. You can use an iron if you want, but I find a finger, a good finger press is sufficient. Just press down really hard and slide your finger down and that will press it open. To reinforce the area where we're going to have that opening for the drawstring, Mark a little dot there. I'm going to stitch just like an eighth of an inch over from that center seam. You don't need to back stitch. So up that dot, leave my needle down, lift up, pivot, take a couple stitches across that seam. Now this is where that pre-pressing comes in handy. We're gonna fold that quarter down again and then fold it the inch and pin it in place. The next thing to do is to sew all the way around right along the edge of that fold there if you have a sewing machine where you can remove that arm piece so that you can slide your bag through that little thing and just sew. If you don't have a sewing machine that has that, like I say, you can flip it right side facing out and sew like this. Now a trick so that you don't get those little bunched up threads on the underside of your fabric, which will be the outside of the fabric, is to grab these two threads and hold them for the first couple stitches and then you won't get that thread nest underneath. There's nothing functionally wrong with it, but it doesn't, it's not very attractive when you're top stitching. Clip your threads. Now, go ahead and flip it right side facing out. Take your turning stick and poke out those corners. And to reinforce that top edge, we're just going to take a few stitches. Again, holding your thread. So we don't want that thread bunching up stitching about an eighth of an inch from the top. Grab your seam ripper. We're gonna make that little hole. We're just gonna pull it apart a little bit so that we can see those stitches and just grab one of them. Make sure you're not cutting the fabric and see that how that seam opens up. And don't worry, it's not going to, since we've reinforced those ends, 
they're not going to come undone further than that point. So it should pull apart pretty easy. See that? Then you can pull those threads out and clip them. I'll give the edges a good pressing. Give the edges a good steam that helps make it easier to roll those edges out. Now I didn't add that tag in this bag, but if you want to learn how to add tags to your projects, I have a tutorial and I'll put the link in the description below for that. Now we're going to measure our twine, our ribbon, or whatever we're using. So depending on how big your bag is, this nine by 11 bag, I'm going to cut two strips of 25 inches. But if you make some random size bag, all you need to do is hang the, of the twine off about two inches and then measure double plus another couple inches and that will give you the cut. So I'm getting about 20, yeah, 24, 25 inches. Now if you have twine like this that is starting to fray, I'm going to make a knot at the end so that I can attach my safety pin to it. Now if you're using just regular ribbon, you probably wouldn't have to tie that knot right now, but otherwise it's just going to fray. And insert it through that hole that we made and thread it all the way so it comes back out the same hole. We're going to bypass that side hole. There you have it. Let's see how that cinches together. Now one last thing. I am going to embellish it. I'm going to open that up again. I am going to add that red fabric star and I've used Wonder Under. And using that Wonder Under is really simple and it's so fun. You can do so many projects with it. And if you're interested in learning how to do that applique, that Wonder Under applique, Put in the comments below that you're interested in that and some more tips on this stuff. And you want to use a dry iron, no steam. Oh my goodness, that is so cute. Just think of the fun gift items you could put in there and deliver for the holidays. So many fun color combinations or even using simple muslin make these bags so adorable. Now, wasn't that simple? I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, make sure you do that. Click on the bell so you can be notified when I put new projects up. There's some more fun things coming, some fun things that you can put inside these bags. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you go through my playlist and see if there's anything else you're interested in making or some great tips on sewing, home DIY projects, and other fun stuff. Check out my patterns on my website, youmakeitsimple.com. There are some fun, simple patterns and projects on there. If you have any questions or comments, you can put those in the comment section below. Have a wonderful day, have fun sewing, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.